Hello. We are live. Yes, we are. And Jane Dore is on. Hello, Jane Dore. Donna Salerno. Dana's watching. Claudette. Michelle Clark. Hi, everyone. Hello. How are we doing? Dennis and Liza are on. Rose is on. Romano. Jen Rice. John Al Camo. Hi, guys. Hello. How's everybody doing? Barbara. Hey guys. Well, it's good to be with you again. Carol Craner. How's everyone doing? We're waiting here. Wow, we're up to 19 already. Lola's on. Hello, Mildred. Yeah, we'll wait for a couple more Ingrid. Hi, on. Ingrid. How's Hi, it Ingrid. going? Hoping graduation. Hopefully, they're going to let you do commencement. Kind of hearing all kinds of rumors about that in Cranford. So, we hope that works out. Angela. John and Michelle are here. Brenda Bucci. Claudette, how are you? Cornelia. Claudette, tell Tony I have my purple cup. I know Tony likes my purple cup. There it is. Rhoda Shepard. Hi, guys. Hey, Rhoda. How you doing? Joanne hey, DeLuisa. Carol. Over there. Lillian. Dana. I think we're, we're pretty doing good there. We got 27 people on. So okay, if you well, want to open a prayer. Yeah, we'll open in prayer, guys. We're going to be um, talking a little bit through Psalm 139. Days. But mostly the last two verses, uh, which is the prayer of David. Uh, he closes out this beautiful psalm with a, a, a really tremendous prayer. And that's what we want to kind of really highlight Brand is, is, is that you. prayer, those last two verses. So let's open in prayer to begin. And then we're going to read the prayer of David from Psalm 139. So Father, we thank you that we can be together in your presence. Lord, um, we are... Uh, God, we're itching for the day when... Uh, when we can be back in full fellowship. We pray for favor, God, within our state. We pray, God, for protected lives, God. We pray, mm -hmm. Lord Jesus, that uh, you would completely eradicate this virus 100% so people, God, um, um, their livelihood would be protected and they would be able, God, to uh, uh, not just catch up or survive, but God, I pray that great blessing Financial blessing will come into all the family units and, and uh, all the people of this, uh, this state of New Jersey, Lord God. And we pray for our governor, God, for, mm, yes, uh, Lord. for a God encounter, for wisdom. But God, we pray that our hearts, as we're going through um, your word tonight, would challenge us to the point where it brings about change, transformation. God, let the revelation of your word bring about the transformation that you desire in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 <laughs> And the dogs barking. Barney. Those people are at the door. Oh, Nicole. Yes. Okay, so that's Barney saying hello. Nicole went out for her evening walk and she's back with her great husband, Aaron. God bless our worship team. Amen. Hallelujah. And all the other worshipers at the church. So, guys. I'll read the last two verses, but we'll, we'll kind of, we're going to break that down in just a second. Um, let me just pop that just a little bit that way. All right. Um, I have such a big head, it's hard to get it in the screen. Look at my head compared to Connie's. I don't know what to tell you. got a big head. Um, could you imagine if I had That's hair on Anthony it? Anthony has a big head. No, but seriously, could you imagine if I had a full head of hair? Be big. I, I mean, it would be big. Back to the 80s. Back to the 80s, high hair. Mullet. Got to um, get a mullet. Yes. Business in the that front. That was my best haircut. Party man. in the back. Mullet. Um, Psalm 139. Now, it starts out tremendously when David comes to the understanding that there's no place he can hide from God. And um, that's how he starts. But at the end, he finishes by praying that since he can't hide from God, he submits to God's seeing eye, to God's heart, to God's love. And he says to God, this is what he says in the last two verses. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me 
and know my anxieties and see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. That's uh, verse 23 and 24. But there's a buildup to that point. Now, again, um, there's, there's one of two reactions when you realize that there's nothing that you do that is hidden from God. Either you're going to run to him or you're going to run away from him. And it almost appears that in the opening of the psalm that David tried running away at one point because he lists all these hiding places. And every time he lists a new hiding place, he says, but God, you are there. All right, let me just read a couple of these verses so you can get a perspective. All right, and then we'll kind of build from there. All right, and jump in anytime you want. I'm listening. You're listening. Mm -hmm. She's a good listener. Verse 1. O oh Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. God's seeing eye is always on us. Why? Because he loves us. <laughs> you understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down. You are acquainted with my ways. And there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it all together. Now, when we start to read these next several verses, you're going to begin to see the, the understanding of what we're talking about, the, the sense of trying to hide from God, but coming to the realization that you can't hide from God. And again, it's going to really bring about one of two reactions. You're either going to run from God or you're going to run to God. Hopefully we will learn uh, to run to God in every instance because truth be told, I mean, we're still vacillating. Sometimes we run to God. Sometimes we run from God. Sometimes we can accept God's will. Other times we fight tooth and nail and declare, God, how, how can this be? God, uh, it appears that the, the, the wicked are being blessed and the righteous are being punished. And, uh, you know, when you try to view things through a human perspective, you're going to come to a bad conclusion, not a God conclusion, not a truth conclusion, but you're going to come to a bad conclusion. If you live in your bad conclusion, you're going to find out that life's going to get more difficult, not better, but worse. And so the best thing we can do is come to God, right? As we are. And that's where David is now as we begin to read on. All right. He says, uh, there's not a word on my tongue, but behold, O oh Lord, you know it all together. You have hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain it. He just blew David's mind. The fact that God is, 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 is omniscient, he's everywhere all the time involved in David's life. It just blew his mind. And so he goes on to say this in verse 7. Now, these, these couple verses here um, are key, verses 7 and 8, all right? Uh, and uh, we'll read 7, 8, and 9, and then we'll kind of jump to the end, verses 23 and 24. But truth be told, all of us can relate to the hiding places. Come on, we, we've all developed hiding places, places where we, we really put our secrets, places where we hide from one another, um, and we put on masks and fronts and we have these little places of refuge. Now we really get to wear masks. Now, <laughs> God, he says, but now we really get to wear a mask. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Here's verse seven. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? Now think about that comment. David uses a very interesting phrase here. Where can I flee from your presence? David is acknowledging that there are times when he wants to run from God. Now, most of the time, if you read the history of David, David was plagued with many things. Um, and one of the things that he was frustrated with was the fact that <laughs> he was running from God several times in his life because the responsibility that he bore in following God seemed to be too much for him. And rightfully so, for a man, for the man David, it was too much. But with God, it's not too much. See, God compensates for our weaknesses. 
God will fill the gaps, God's strength, right? When we are weak, he is strong. And so when David submits unto God, and that's his conclusion in the end of the psalm, when David submits his life back over to God, he transitions back into the but God. But God, you are forever faithful. But God, I will trust in you. If you read through the Psalms, there's this pattern where David's struggling in his humanity with the burden that God put on him, the assignment, the call, the vision, uh, the ministry that God gave him. And, and, and some of you right now are dealing with life issues that you feel are too hard for you. And so we, we just want to pour into you tonight and tell you that with God, you will get through. I mean, if, if, if you learn anything from David, read Psalm 23, the shepherd's psalm. Even though he walks through the valley of the shadow of death, he will fear no evil. Now, now the, the key word in that phrase is through. Even though he walks through the valley, he's I not stopping. That. He's not slowing down. He's walking through. Guys, we need breakthrough. We need to transition through. We need to make it all the way through the wilderness. We need to learn how to pray through our burdens. And every time we do, we're doing it with God, not, not apart from God. But when you're deceived to think you're doing something apart from God, you become overwhelmed and you start to really fight or look for these hiding places. So now David starts to talk about that in verse 7, right? Where can I go from your spirit or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. Doesn't matter how high I build my life, God, you're higher. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. God, doesn't matter how far I fall, your love will rescue me. Isn't that great? I'll read this again because the word hell is Sheol. Um, and uh, uh, David says, if I make my bed there. In other words, he's becoming intimate with the, uh, uh, the environment of hell, of, of hellish things. And then so the phrase make my bed there is, is very telling to us, uh, becoming intimate. In other words, giving over to, he can't fight any longer um, um, the flesh as it were. Uh, behold, you are there. God has a point of rescue for each of us. And God says in his word, he'll never let you be tempted beyond what you can bear, but with it, he will make a way of escape. Now, you have to choose that way. That's the key there. It's a conditional promise that says he'll make a way of escape. But if you don't choose God's, God's escape route, you're going to be steeped uh, in your temptation. And, and so David, David knew that better than most of us. If, if I uh, take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea. How many of you have said, I'd like to live on a secluded island? I'd like to just get away from everything and everybody. Did you ever say that? Come on, let, let's be real here. How many of you wish you could win the mega millions and just go. Clearing him. And just go. Well, that's what David's basically saying. In his world, there was no lottery, but he says, if I could take the wings of the morning, in other words, my wings will give me a new day. And that's, that's kind of what he's residing in. He's saying, God, if I had wings, I can, I can have a new thing. I, I can... And he seems to be steeped in this fantasy of something new. In other words, you ever heard the phrase that the grass is uh, always greener on the other side? Well, that's, that's kind of sarcasm uh, at its best. And it, it really means, that, no, it's not. Um, everybody has issues. It's all relative. Everybody has problems. It doesn't matter where you go. David came to that conclusion. If I go to the heights of heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I have the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea. Even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide me from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. 
it doesn't matter what darkness you've fallen into. God's ability to see you is, is perfect. Why? Because his love is perfect. It, it's, it's not that God is looking in on you um, um, as if he can't help you. God is looking in on you continually, even when you fall. God's heart breaks for you and wants to rescue you. And he will send answers. He will send the, 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 the guide of the Holy Spirit to lead us back out of that darkness. And, and that really brings us to the conclusion in uh, on the last two verses. Now, the next verses, verses 13 through 18, are beautiful. And it, he begins to come to the, the revelation about his identity. First, he comes to the conclusion in his natural senses that, God, I've tried. I can't run from your presence. I've lived in darkness at times. I've made my bed in hell. But even there, God, you never stop loving me. You never stop calling out to me. You never stop extending your hand to rescue me and showing me your heart. Now he comes into the next part of his revelation is that he has a destiny, an identity that had nothing to do with his earthly circumstances after birth. His destiny was sealed before he was born. God, you formed me in my mother's womb. I was skillfully fashioned by you, O oh God. And even before I lived any one of my days, God, you had them all written down in your book. You see, David now comes to the revelation that if God made me for his good pleasure, what, what can man do to me? And so now David has to go back to the prayer of the last two verses to correct what transpired in the first 12 verses. That sense of running, that shame, that, that, that guilt, um, um, uh, the problems of fear and anxiety and depression. You know, David dealt with depression. We can, we can really pull that out of the text of the scriptures that talk about his life. Could you imagine? How, how would you feel if you're, you're summoned by King Saul to play music, worship music, to soothe his spirit because his anointing had lifted and he's now being vexed by, by an evil spirit. And the only thing that calms him down is, is worship music. And the worshiper that had the anointing to play healing music, and I want to encourage all you worshipers, um, you know, there's healing and deliverance in your anointing. So please do not shy away from that. Let God use you. And I think that's what we really need to be doing today. The only place that's going to take us out, you know, we're 10 weeks into this, however long, is really putting on worship music. That we really should just settle down before God. Lord, stop my mind and let me just hear your heart. Let me hear your worship. There's nothing like it. Like even, and God was so merciful that even Saul was feeling tormented. Yeah. But God gave him David to give him worship music. So think about that, how much God loves all of us, even though we make mistakes, even though we disobey God, even though we know we do things and God told us not to do it and yeah. we do it anyway. Yeah. So know that the, the one place that takes us all out of this is God's worship. And it's getting harder. It's harder to keep focusing. It's harder to keep walking this road because we're everyone's tired and we're done. And the only place we can find that is through worship because that's yeah, the only way yeah. our hearts open up and really, it is like the Song of the Angels. I mean, it just really is a place that heaven's all about. All they do is worship God. So why not yeah. do that here on earth? That's why heaven's heaven because it's filled with worship. So do that. I'm finding even before bed, you know, in bed now, I put worship music on just Amen. to quiet down the crazy of the day. And, you know, just the, now it is the monotony of the day every day. You know, how much food am I going to eat today? Yeah. You know, and it's, 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 it's getting hard now to keep ourselves busy, you know? 
and um, well, guys, there's 150 um, songs of of, of yep. uh, and the Psalms of of really life issues. That's that's how David put it, and and the other writers of the Psalms, um, whether it's Asaph or uh, you know or the different musicians that were. Uh, listed as some of the writers of uh, 150 Psalms, but they were all written and and penned to be sung as worship to the Lord. And so now David again has a revelation, right? His destiny is sealed, not in the will of men, but in the heart of God. He was predestined. Guys, say this with me. I am predestined, I am predestined. to be God's child. You're predestined to be God's child. Right there, mm -hmm. Connie was predestined to be God's daughter. And realize that because the, act, the attack of the enemy is going to make us feel not that. He's going to make us feel weak. He's going right, to make right. us see where's your faith. What are you doing? Why aren't you believing? But we are God's kids. We are the king. You know, you we are. are royalty. You are. So realize that and know that and walk in that. Amen. Now, getting back to the point where David was in the chambers of King Saul playing his harp, and um, and and really, uh, I guess it's a lyre, uh, lair, lyre, lair. I don't know how to pronounce that correctly, but it's a stringed instrument, okay? And he's playing it, and David is soothed uh, by a spirit, but then he becomes enraged with jealousy, and he throws a spear at David, and David now runs for his life, and at this point. Uh, David recognizes he's not safe because what we're dealing with here is a uh, a fallen king. In other words, he's 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 fallen before God. His anointing is lifted, and now he's showing bipolar tendencies. In other words, he's vexed by evil, uh, an evil spirit, yet he has an understanding that God is righteous. And so he has these bipolar moments, right? He summons David to bring him worship. In the next instance, he's vexed by the evil spirit and he tries to kill David, to pin him against the wall with a spear. And, uh, well, he's got resentment. He's angry. He's, oh, yeah, you know, jealous. He was supposed to be the most handsome person around. And you hear people chanting how great David is. And here he's yeah. been fighting battles. I mean, there's a lot of anger and stuff going on in him. And that's when you open yourself up right. to having that enemy come. David because was now the you people's open the king. door. Yeah, and, and that's a hard thing to take when someone is, yeah. you know, he wasn't just being put down by one or two people. It was the whole right. tribe of Israel. So they would sing um, um, some mm -hmm. of the songs when they came back from battle. And David Saul and Saul. Killed Saul thousands. killed his thousands and David, David killed, killed his ten thousands. thousands. <laughs> um, and wow, that didn't sit real well with a guy with an evil spirit. It didn't take much to tweak him uh, because the enemy was now his voice. And so we've got a bipolar situation here. Um, I want to tell you something. <laughs> God help us. God help us when a leader is vexed in this manner. That's why the Bible says pray for your leaders. Guys, some of our leaders, now, again, I pray for our leaders, and I'm not judging our leaders, but some of our leaders need deliverance, right? Sometimes I need deliverance. I'm a leader. Connie's a leader. Sometimes I need to be delivered from self. And so, guys, pray for leaders. The responsibility is, at times, it's overbearing. But again, if we do it apart from God, we will fail. But if we do it with God, again, our destiny, right? So now think about David. David, uh, again, had been ripped apart. Uh, his world had collapsed. He was on the run. He's hiding, uh, in hiding. And, uh, and, and at this point, he, he says, God, it doesn't matter where I go. Your destiny is still with me. God, you don't repent of your callings. God, your anointing is still on me. Even when he tried to hide. Even when he tried to he hide. You can't hide from God. No, you can't. I mean, if you, if, <laughs> if you want case in point, read the book of Jonah, mm -hmm. right? Jonah Had to put him in a way. Is, is really the poster child for what we're talking about. Talk about someone who was running from God, right? Um, and, uh, <laughs> and, and, and God said, wait a minute, Jonah, you've got a mission. You were created for something, and you're going to accomplish it because I'm going to do it with you. And uh, 
uh, at some point, um, I had to believe that Jonah had given God um, a full reign over his life to do exactly what he did, to cause the ship to be in peril, to cause him to be thrown overboard. Remember, he told the people on the ship, throw me overboard. <laughs> now, how uh, you, you can beat Jonah up all you want, but he trusted God to the point where he said, look, what's happening here is because I'm in disobedience. Throw me overboard. God will take care of that. You guys will be safe, and God will take care of me. That's basically what he was saying. And so God brought, uh, again, a great fish. I don't know what kind of fish it was, a great fish that became his mode of transportation. And we're going to talk about being transported as we break these two verses down. But let me just get to it. Let me read the verses 23 and 24 again, and then we'll begin to break this down. So um, here's what it says. Remember, this is David's prayer after finding himself in run mode, hiding from God, and then coming back to the sense that, wait a minute, God, you love me, you made me, you fashioned me, and I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. You are God's wonder on the earth. Now you say that to yourself every day when you look in the mirror, when you're brushing your teeth. You know, we pray about a sign and a wonder. Every time I see a, a human being, it's, it's, it's a, a sign and a wonder. God expressed himself in creating each individual human being. And that's why uh, we, uh, we are so, so really torn apart when a life is lost uh, needlessly. And we know what transpired um, you know, recently with uh, uh, George Floyd. And, um, and we pray for his family and we, we pray for the situation. We pray for the community as well. Um, and, and again, uh, a precious, precious life was lost, and mm -hmm. and uh, we, we we need to see this stop. Amen? Amen. All right, guys, let's get back to the point. Verse 23, search me and try me and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Well, let's break down verse 23. He says several things here. First, he says, search me. Then he says, know my heart. Then he says, try me. Then he says, know my anxieties. Okay, so the word search uh, in its original translation means to penetrate or to examine intimately. Think about that, right? So God, search me. Now, in other words, David is saying, God, put me under your radiant light. God, expose me because I'm safe in your presence. Isn't that amazing? That the vulnerability of David in this prayer to bear himself completely before the Lord and trust that God was going to minister to him. Do you know, God will never be able to minister to you in a place that you aren't willing to give him, first by confession, Secondly, by submission, all right? Those two things are very important. How do I give something to God? First, by confession or declaration. It has to be kind of a, 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 a word that comes out of your mouth, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So first, by confession or declaration. Secondly, by submission. And that's where we find David. He starts out by asking God to penetrate him in his innermost being, and to examine him intimately. God, go to the depth of my soul and show me what's there. Show me what's there. The next thing he says, know my heart. Now, the word know here means to, to ascertain by seeing. Uh, in other words, um, he's, he, he's telling God, God, your ability to see is greater than mine. And when you ask God, God, what are you seeing? Do you know your vantage point will be enhanced tremendously. But if you're kind of relying on human eyes or, or human um, discernment or, or, or human uh, um, um, perception, um, any one of those things, you're going to be limited. You're going to see some things that are right, 
but for the most part, the, the, the most intense and accurate vantage point of vision is through the eyes of God, through the eyes of the Spirit of God. And so David says, I want you, O God, to ascertain information through your vision, not mine. Now, I don't know about you, but, but we have been given uh, information over these last 10 weeks that has, it has shifted, it has changed. One day it's this, the next day it's that. And people are trying, but here's the limitations of humanity. If we were to depend on God's ability to see, God examine this virus through your eyes so that you can ascertain the truth and declare it to us. Uh, so David's saying, God, know my heart. See through your vision, examine, ascertain, uh, bring information, bring truth, because you will see at the molecular level of my being, God. God, I, I only see um, um, in an unmagnified reality, but God sees us at the molecular or the eternal dimension of who we are. And so David is now relying on that, that intense, intimate seeing of God. Um, so he says, know my heart, ascertain my seeing. Then he says, try me. Uh, and again, uh, here the word in, in, in the Hebrew uh, means to, uh, to test by trial. Uh, in other words, there has to be a sense of, now, if you understand this is not a judicial trial, that's not uh, uh, the understanding here at all. It's not a judicial trial. Um, it's a trial to say, um, uh, if, if I was to develop a product, to invent a product, um, and I wanted to sell it uh, to the public, I would first test it, I would try it. Um, I would put it under rigorous conditions that no person would ever do to this in their daily use of this item that I've now invented. And now I know that it will do exactly what it says and above and beyond that. It's been tested, it's been tried. now. I could take you to 1 Corinthians chapter 3 that talks about the fact that uh, everything we do will be tested by fire, mm -hmm. all right? Um, and it will be one of six different materials. It will be wood, hay, stubble, or gold, silver, or precious jewels, all right? Wood, hay, or stubble is consumed in the fire. It just, it has no lasting value. It has no value at all. But gold, silver, and precious jewels comes out purer by the fire. And so David is saying, God, test me with fire, right? He's saying, try me. Test me through the trial of fire. And this is showing us more than ever what really is important and what isn't. Because yeah. look how quickly our lives changed. And it really is showing us that we're so bent on things that in the long run, is it really going to matter? You know, and that's the same things when we think we're doing things before the Lord. I mean, are they going to last or are they just temporal acknowledgement? You know, yeah. that's the thing. And, and, and we don't want to waste our times in that wood stubble and stuff. I want to be doing the things that are going to say, wow, you've built like on the solid rock. You've built with the right materials. I mean, that's really what it's all about. What are we using to build what God has for us and what he wants us to do? Yeah. You know, and, and the building materials both can build something, but you know, it's like the storm, you know, the, right. the person who didn't build it on the rock, it was gone immediately. And, and the person who did, they lasted. It's the same thing with the things we do before the Lord. Are they eternal or are they just temporal like the surface? Right, right. Um, the latter three, uh, gold, silver, and precious jewels are materials we use to build the kingdom of God. Why? Because God's a king, God's royalty, right? These gifts are very important. These things are eternal, um, and they have eternal weight to them. But wood, hay, and stubble are things that we use. They're one generational um, in, in their nature. In other words, they'll only serve us for a short amount of time. They're not a legacy we can hand down. They, they do not depict God. 
in his generational blessings. In other words, God's the God of the generations. I, I talk about this in many instances, but he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Why did he say that? It didn't stop with Jacob. It, it, it's a continuum. God was laying out a principle here that he's building for every generation, and there's a sequential order. It builds upon, builds upon, builds upon, precept upon precept, okay? So when we use wood, hay, or stubble, we're only building for a temporary uh, uh, period of time that Doesn't is self-serving and not productive or beneficial for others, okay? So I, God show us what materials we're using today and what is the consistency of them? What are they made up of, God? because we want to access the gold, silver, and precious jewels of the kingdom and build with those. We want to be kingdom builders, right? Okay. All right. So he goes on to say in, in, in this last part of verse 23, uh, know my anxieties or know my thoughts. It depends on what translation you use. And I use the New King James Version. Um, Old King James says thoughts. Uh, other translations might use a different word. Um, but I like the fact that uh, the New King James uses the word anxieties. Know my anxieties. Do you know that many times we will not show people or share with people or disclose to people the things that worry us? And there's a false sense of pride in that. Well, you know, I don't want to bother them, you know. Uh, they've got enough on their plate. That's baloney. <laughs> The real sense is, is I want you to think I've got it all together. But David here is laying bare before God, trusting that God will never shame him and God won't expose him. He says, God, know my anxieties. Know, God, what is the root system that's bearing the fruit of fear and depression and worry? God, Know me at the root core of my being so you can uproot the things that are not of you and implant the things that are you. And so that's kind of how I look at this, the way David's praying this prayer at the end, these two verses of a tremendous prayer because of what he learned in his dialogue with God. Remember, the psalm is a dialogue with God. He's dialoguing with God. And at the conclusion, he closes out with this tremendous prayer. Now, the last verse, verse 24, um, says, And see if there is any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Okay, now, I'm going to give you a, kind of a premise here to think about. Wickedness, um, uh, there is a translation for it from the Hebrew, and I'll get to that in a minute, but also... Um, it's our sinful reactions to life's experiences, okay? I wanna tell you something. Every time there is a, 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 a racial hate crime, people will fall into groups um, and people will now begin to take sides based on color. Um, and so, as we begin to look at this, right? See, my reactions, my sinful reactions to life's experiences or life's indoctrinations. The devil will indoctrinate you through repetition, this person is this because this person will always be that. This person will never change. This person is inherently bad. Um, these are the very things that brought about historically genocide throughout uh, the, uh, uh, the centuries of world history. Uh, we can begin to look at that. And, um, um, it, you know, uh, uh, of course, in the 20th century, the greatest um, advocate for genocide was, was Adolf Hitler, right? Uh, and, uh, and what he did to the Jews, um, uh, killing six million Jews in the gas chambers and uh, in, in other ways. Um, um, the reason they developed the gas chambers, and uh, think about how evil this is. The reason they developed gas chambers is because uh, ammunition to shoot them was too costly. 
Um, so they had to come up with an economic way to kill the masses of the Jewish population. Um, and uh, it's, it's horrific um, what goes on uh, in someone's mind. But, but we need God to search us at the root core. And David is saying, see if there be any wicked way in me. Now the word wicked is translated in the Hebrew. It means an idol. What is an idol? Anything you worship that's not God, right? Anything you worship that's not God. David says, see if there be any wicked way in me. And so he's saying to God, he's, he's saying, look deep inside me as I give you access to every chamber of my soul. Do you know we are compartmentalized even in our spirituality? Mm -hmm. Guys, we have... Uh, picture your 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 soul like a a multi-room home and there are places of secret entry um, that we don't give access to to others and even God um, so David now is laying that bear before God he's saying uh, search me God try me see if there be any wicked way in me the thing that's so hard, and I think the reason why we categorize things, is when we think we're better than someone else, we have to do a check and say, Jesus died for that person. And we keep forgetting that. Just because someone's different, some just because someone comes from another place. Right, right. My Jesus died for just him. So it's, again, the way we look at the way God loves the world and how hate really does goes totally against the love of God and what mm. he wanted for us. And and we have to keep reminding that, oh, that person's weird. Oh, my God, I can't stand him. Jesus died for him. He would have died just for him. That's how Amen. much his life yeah, is, yeah. is important to him. So we have to keep bringing ourselves back. I am no better than anybody else. I am no special than anyone, anybody else. You know, and, it, and it's, you know, and then the more titles you have and the more money you have and, the glamour and I mean that's even more now you really think you're the be-all to end-all none of us are yeah. the be-all to end-all no that's the wood hay and stubble you know and <laughs> and that's what we need to realize Jesus all and I say that to myself all the time or if people say something I'm like Jesus died for him and that kind of kind of puts you in your place when you you think of that and what God's love is really all about I remember wickedness is our sinful reactions to life's experiences yeah. And uh, we have the ability to react the way God would. Now, if you want to understand um, proper reactions, read the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5. You'll begin to understand that. If you read the, the whole Sermon on the Mount, you'll get a great perspective on how God, by the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, wants us to react to life experiences, not from historical woundedness, mm -hmm. but from a fresh indwelling of God we can respond like God. And so, and that's um, why we have to search, see me, and know if there yeah. be any wicked. That, that's what it comes down to. Because yeah. when we're looking that way, that means there's something in our heart that's causing us to look at people the way God Take wants out the to. bad roots there, God. It's, it's, all about, it's all about me and God. And as long as I, I have to always please God. Amen. And I, yeah, we, we have to search our hearts. Yeah. Every day, someone can get on our nerves. Yeah, every day. And more day. than one time. <laughs> it's just the more way it is. More than one time. So, um... Because some people don't may never change, but God can change you and how we like to look at things. So in discipleship, right, God called us, God said to his, uh, uh, his, his original um, apostles, he said, uh, upon ascension at, in the Great Commission of Matthew 28 and Mark 16... Go into all the world and make what? Disciples. Make disciples, right? He didn't say make Christians, but he said make disciples. Um, you know, so that's, we've got to understand a disciple is one who grows like his teacher. Our goal is to be like Jesus. And He's our need to teacher. Be like two people, Jesus okay? or the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, again, uh, we want our reactions to be so. So if you want to learn, if you want to be discipled by Jesus, read the Sermon on the Mount, meditate on it, pray it through, and let God now transform you into that reality, the Sermon on the Mount, Matthews 5, 6, and 7. Okay, those three chapters. It's tremendous, tremendous chapters. 
and that will really give us an understanding. That is, is the basis of all discipleship. I believe it's right there in the Sermon on the Mount. And guys, I want to encourage you with that. Now, the last thing that David says before we close here is, he says to God, lead me uh, in the way everlasting. And again, do you know that there, there's a road um, that has eternity marked on it? Um, it's not a dead end. Um, it's, it's a perpetual pathway um, that leads to God's heart and, and just goes on and on and on forever and is walking in the dimension of the Spirit, right? And so uh, the word lead is translated in the Hebrew um, to mean transport, or guide. So what is David saying? David's saying, wait a minute, I have to be lift, actually lifted out of where I am and transported into your guidance, your pathway, your road, your will, your way. Do you know we can believe God today to lift Amen. you up out of where you are? Amen. And to transport you. And he wants to set you free. And he wants yeah, you amen, to walk in amen. his purposes. He wants you to be free. Yeah. And have all God has created you to be. And more now amen. than ever is where we have to. We have to fight for it. We have to want it. We have to do everything we possibly can to get it. You know, it's, just, it, it's like you find that. I went for the cheese yesterday. And it took me an hour. But I got that cheese. And I waited for it. Romano, you know, Romano Pecorino, Pecorino for four dollars a pound. Imported from the motherland, but Italy. When you want something, you go for it. And and if you <clears> want freedom, you gotta fight for it. You gotta take it by force, and you gotta hold on to it tightly because the enemy's always gonna try to steal it from us. He's always gonna take another little way, another little stupid lie that it's gonna make us get back into something that God has set us free from. So we need to remember how hard, how much it is to keep, hold tight to what God has done in our lives. Okay, I'm going to give you two words yeah. to, to kind of summarize these two verses, right? David is saying in his prayer, God transform me and God transport me. All right? Transform me from the inner self and transport me into all that you are and all that you're doing. Don't you want to be caught up in the business of God, the business of the kingdom? Amen. Well, guys, we can have that today mm -hmm. if we ask God to transform us and transport us. God, lift me up out of the temporal. Lift me up, God, out of those things that are fleeting and, and transport me, God. Actually, you know, if you read the book of Acts, you're going to see that Philip... Um, um, was uh, he was one of the first deacons. Um, he had an encounter with God where he was transported after his ministry to the eunuch. Mm -hmm. Remember, he read him the scriptures uh, from the prophets and he told him about Jesus and then he baptized him in water and immediately he was taken up and, and gone. He was... Mm -hmm. whoosh, he actually was transported. Guys, I believe that God is still in the business of transporting mm -hmm. us. Philip was transformed from the ministry of deaconhood into the ministry of the first evangelist. Mm -hmm. Philip is known as the first evangelist in the book of Acts. And deaconhood is servants of God, and that's what we need to remember. Now, he didn't stop being a deacon. Yeah. He didn't stop serving. No, but I'm saying the first step but, of yeah, he was Because he was servants. faithful, because he was a faithful servant... God, remember God, Jesus says, if you're faithful with the little things, mm -hmm. he'll give you much, More. right? More. And so that's what he did with Philip. And so Philip was transported into a higher calling. Now, he didn't know he was going to be doing that. But God transformed his life and then transported him onto the road of his destiny. Philip, your assignment is done here. I am now transforming you and transporting you to the new day, the new season, the next assignment that I have for you. God is lifting you up out of things that bear no fruit and God is transporting you into fertile soil because your seed bag is full with new seed. And we gotta get sowing. It's sowing time. And if we sow faithfully, we're going to experience reaping time 
We're going to reap a harvest if we don't lose heart. Amen. Galatians 6, 9 tells us that. Don't grow weary while doing good, for in due season you'll reap a harvest if you don't lose heart. Guys, we love you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's what I got tonight. Yep. What do you got? That's what I'm saying. Where It's time. It's time to reap in now. That harvest is there, and we planted a lot of seed. Yeah. And it's ready to be harvested. Guys, remember, we've got to pray. Um, um, I want you to pray specifically for what's going on in, uh, in Minnesota. Um, yeah. um, uh, uh, we do not want to see the devil get a foothold and burn right. the city down. Mm -hmm. All right? Um, um, he is big on stirring embers of... of, of of revenge and hatred and we got to believe God for justice we're going to believe God for justice and pray that we walk hand in hand no Amen. matter what color we are black and white yeah. Spanish that yeah. we yeah. we are all appalled and we this are. can't be we're in because we're in every agreement. life matters everyone we're in agreement and we're that, in agreement that, with uh, that George Floyd was, 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 was horrendous. Uh, needlessly his life was ended we're, yeah. we're in agreement and, and that's what hate does. It's a, a heinous situation, mm -hmm. and so we're believing for justice. Our hearts are broken over it. Um, guys, uh, we love you with all our hearts. We're here for you, and uh, we want to make sure that you connect with us. You can always call the church office at 908-709-9600. Now, there are prompts on the phone that will get you to us, okay? There's an emergency number if mm -hmm. it's an emergency. Mm -hmm. There is a prayer chain. In other words, people dedicated to pray, that's checked every day. So you can leave your prayer request on that prompt, mm -hmm. all right? And uh, you can leave messages on different office phones uh, for different people mm -hmm. in the office as well. But guys, we love you. We want to pray for you. And we need to you. keep Mary Ellen and Jim Nash. Um, they both have COVID, yeah. but Mary Ellen has been brought to the hospital. And she is having difficulty breathing. And the doctors are trying to readjust it. So let's lift them up in prayer. Yeah. We love Jim and Mary Ellen. I mean, they are true servants. If they were the true servants of God. That serves so so Amen. you know Amen. so well in yeah, the church. We, we so love please them. live them up and Diane, her daughter, and you know and, it's and a son hard in law time. Harold, Harold um, and, you know. and their son. I can't Steve. Is it Stevie? I don't know. I, I lost well, They've his got name. a couple sons, so yeah. So um, please lift them up and remember them in our prayers. <clears throat> yeah, guys we, we wanna pray. Um and uh yeah, yeah, we're 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 definitely um, Debbie Hart's is sharing. We're we're praying for What's the Floyd family. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're praying for the family yes. in the city. Um, yes, and uh, we, Debbie, we love you, sweetie, and yes. we're with you, honey, and and we just pray God's blessing over you. And I thank you because you are one of those ladies who cries out for for righteousness and justice. Mm -hmm. And and that's what we and, want uh, is justice now. You. And God is going to be glorified. Yeah, we have yeah. to always believe that God is going to be glorified. We have to pray. This is a time where I believe we are going to pray and God's hand is going to move. Amen. It's time. Amen. So please keep praying for that because we're going through this and there's a reason why God is causing it. Yeah. And his name will always be glorified. Guys, so, um, we're going to do this together. Um, again, we are, um, we probably um, have, um, we're probably positioned the best to go through things like this because we're a, 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 a multi-racial um, congregation um, and uh, and so we have the ability um, um, to listen to each other's heart to have empathy for one another to understand one another and then to share with our communities around us um, that uh, uh, that uh, it works it's 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 again even as David prayed search me try me know me uh, we're, if we do that for each other, we'll get beyond the surface mm -hmm. color mm -hmm. and we'll recognize we're all the same. We sure are. We all now, cry, we all hurt. <laughs> now, we all bleed the same. We're all in the same storm, but we're not all in the, the same, same boat. boat. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, I get that, guys. I know that. Um, uh, that my challenges are not your challenges, your challenges are not mine. But nevertheless, uh, we can be victorious if we walk with God and each other. Amen. So let's pray. We We're going to pray you. for pray. you. We love you, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus yes, Christ. Great, Connie, you pray first and then I'll Lord close. Lord God, again, we are, we are here before you saying, Lord, speak, Lord God. Show us, Father. Use us the way you want us to be used, Father God. Mm. We are believing for great and mighty things. Lord God, we are believing that this is going to change our nation, yes, our God. lives, our families, 
our world, Lord mm. God. Help us to be all in on this, Father God. Yes, Strengthen Lord. us. This is, this is boot camp, Father God. Help us to be ready and prepared for all that you have. But the most important thing is we want to hear your voice and walk in your steps and be in the place that you want us to be. I thank you, Father God, because in our weakness, you are our strength. Yes, God. And you're building thank our you, space, you, our Lord. faith. And you are, you, you've said you would never leave us or forsake us. We mm. walk hand in hand with you in this, oh God. Hallelujah. And Father, uh, God, we just pray your, your blessing on every heart, yeah, God. Mary, I'm in general, God, we God. pray for the ones that are struggling, Lord God, um, that, um, that they would find the place of your peace. God, that they would find that it's safe to come to you, God, and not run from you. Lord, that you can transform us and transport us into the very reason why we were created. So we pray destiny over every life. God, we pray the shalom of God over you right now, that the mm -hmm. peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So let your meditation be shifted mm -hmm. into things that are true, pure, noble, praiseworthy yes, of good Jesus. report. We bless you now, and we ask that the presence of God follow you all the days of your life. In Jesus' name, amen. God we bless you. We love you guys, you. and we're always here for you. We're just a phone call away. Yes. Love you, and have a great night. Good night.